of us women in the house today, that's not our expectation today, is it? Amen? Now, if you want to get in that line, you can. <laughs> Amen? But expecting God to deliver, when you're expecting, you're waiting and you're wanting something. I had looked at uh, some things as far as gestation and pregnancy, and I saw where elephants have the longest pregnancy. You say, well, how long is it, Pastor Ella? Well, elephants have the longest pregnancy, and it's about 18 to 22 months. I ain't going to talk to the men because y'all know nothing about this question. Ladies, how many of you want to carry a baby 18 to 22 months? No, I don't think so. And then when we looked at a... Uh, this was a Virginia possum. Now, see, Pastor tried to fact check me on this one. I said a Virginia possum, which is the same as a North American possum, but have 12 days of pregnancy. Now, ladies, we don't want that. Every 12 days, we don't want to have children. Amen? And I looked at the longevity of it and the shortness of it, and I realized that sometimes with the things of God, some things are longer and sometimes it's shorter. Amen. And I looked at that Virginia possum, though. If we, as people of God, we need to be birthing something, though, even more than every, what, 12 days. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen in the house. And if it's been two years since you birthed out something as far as in your spirit, it's time for you to deliver. Amen. So we look at our scripture today, and I, let me just make this one more thing. Human beings have 40 weeks or nine months gestation. That's how long we, you uh, should be pregnant, uh, that, where most people are. Some people deliver at uh, 38 weeks and 39. You can go overdue and be 42. One of the longest pregnancies that I saw in the encyclopedia, well, in, in the book, that's the encyclopedia on your phone, one woman had a pregnancy of 12 months, had a 10-pound baby. She was 25 years old. Her name was Beulah. You see how you know that, Pastor? I looked it all up. You had to look it up. Beulah had that 25, had, she's 25 years old, had that 10-pound baby. And then they even put this in there. The daddy was, that was her baby daddy she was married to. <laughs> what did that have to do with it? <laughs> A lot of somebody got to take care of that 10-pound baby for the rest of his life. But I thought that was quite interesting. You said, why do you say that? So that if you're not awake, you'll start listening real quick when I get to the scripture. <laughs> what are you saying? I got your attention now. You done talked about a possum and an elephant and a human being. Let's look at Acts, the, 30, the third chapter, excuse me. And the first verse through the ninth said, One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple, gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple court. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, and as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Wow. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And when all the people saw him walking and praising God, praise God, they rejoiced. I said they rejoiced. For the, and Acts 422 said this, NIV, for the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. 
You talk about a long way. One thing about that gate called beautiful, I looked in the name of that Greek name of that, ga- of that gate was, uh, it was expecting something to happen. Amen? I said it was uh, something uh, beautiful in the Greek name was happening or uh, coming at the right time. Isn't that something? Well, you know, sometimes God will tell me things a little bit later on in the night. It's funny how when God tells you stuff and keep you up, you're not as tired as when you just sit there and worry about stuff you're on your own. Amen? <laughs> I said, Lord, I love hanging out with you. And please don't let me be tired when I wake up in the morning. If you hanging out with me, you hanging out with life. Amen? So the Greek name happening or coming at the right time. I believe for this man, it was the right time. He was over 40 years old. They said the people had been bringing him to the temple to beg alms. That is to get whatever he needs for his day-to-day food and the day-to-day things he needed. And that when he was there and when Peter said to the man, look at us, the Bible says, the lame man looked at him, expecting what? Money. How many of I ask you if you, God going to bless everybody with a million dollars in there? How many believe that? Every hand would go up. Everybody get pregnant with money. <laughs> in fact, the only pregnancy that most people want to come to pass is money. Just like the man sitting there that day. He, but, and he was expecting money, and, and he looked at them, and they said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I to thee. And, and you know what? He got something better than money. How many of you know he got more than what he came for? How many of you know money is something, but it ain't everything? If you need healing, it's what this man needed. If he'd been, he was what, over 40 years old and couldn't walk, he needed to have a healing, praise God. What am I saying? You got to know what you're expecting. You'll be long overdue if you're expecting one thing and something else come, and you don't know what God wants to give you that day. Amen? I've had some pregnant women. They'll say, I was one on a boy, and I got another girl. <laughs> I tried, and I tried, and I had four boys, and I had, I had one more. I said, well, now you got a basketball team. When it comes to God, though, he knows what we need. I, I don't have any money. And I can picture the joy he, he, when he was no longer crippled. And he got up and he leaped and he walked. And, 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 he, and he began to follow the, the, them around, the disciples around. Because over there, that was, ver- that was chapter 4. When he willed them as a witness, this is the miracle that occurred. This is the man that got healed. <laughs> How do you know God, a miracle will draw people in? Amen. Praise God. You say, but what are we going to do in this delivery room? What, what it is it? When I know God I got something better for me. Uh, what, what am I going to do? Well, there's some things when a woman gets pregnant, they have to do in the delivery room. And you want to give them some instructions. But in God's delivery room, you got to develop your own line to God. What do you mean? You can't be like Lot. Lot knew Abraham, and therefore he got blessed because he knew Abraham. But Abraham knew God. It's not good enough in this day and age for us to just know somebody that know God. You got to know God for yourself. Somebody go ahead and their credit card over somebody. I said, now you got my line of credit because you're going to say, hold up, hold up. Don't you spend over $50. <laughs> but I got my own line of blessings to God. I don't have to pay no pastor Henry. I got my own line of blessings. Amen. Don't just know about God, but know God for yourself. What else? You got to move forward with the signs of the, of, of the delivery. When you're in the delivery room having a baby, you can't say, well, is it time? I, I don't know what, what's going on. They tell you what certain things is. Some people have gone to the hospital before time and tried to have a baby one time. <laughs> Amen. You got to move with the signs. What it is, once you find out how God can bless you, how, how God, if God bless you in the small storms, if he keep you in the small storms, he'll keep you in the big ones. That is what, when you having them little pains in your back, when you're walking around with this before the delivery, when you get in the delivery room, God is able to bring you out. 
the big storm. Be able to trust and praise God. It prepares you for the big ones. When you go through these little things, start praising God. We, we, then when you get to the big ones, you won't have to wonder, how am I going to come through this? Forgive him when, uh, when you want revenge. When you're in the delivery room, you can't sit there mad at your husband because I wanted to really be mad at Brother Henry, okay? If I could have broke his hand, I would have been gotten away with it. And some ladies feel that way. They sit down like it's a football game. Go ahead, push. Go ahead, be good. Blah, 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 blah. Push my I hit you all right. <laughs> Amen. So you know you can't afford to have revenge when you're getting ready for God to do something in your life. You got to know that changing positions sometimes is, is impossible and it's hard. But in some situations, you got to change your position. They do when you get in the delivery room. They don't let you sit up. I'm going to walk around and have this paper. You're going to lay down, and we're going to put your legs this way. Amen. There are some things if you care and you want to deliver and you want from God, you've got to change your position. You've got to get on whose side? God's side. You've got to love God with everything. When you get in there, you can't rush God. How many know you can't rush no baby? I wish this baby would come on. Well, no, you, he's got his appointed time. It's a due season. There are things God want to do in your life is due season. God specifically designed and allowed things to occur in our lives and, and go to, through the maximum amount of spiritual growth, and it will take place before we activate his blessing. What am I saying? God waiting on us. He knows what we can handle, but God wants us to grow into it. When we go through difficult situations in our lives, we do not feel that we're growing because we're so focused on the pain. When you're in the delivery room having a baby, you focused on the pain. Okay? I've seen a very few women, and, and Sister Irene has a daughter, that she, she just seemed like nothing was hurting her at all. I believe that she wasn't focused on the pain. Sometimes we can be going through trials and we're so focused on the pain, focused on the stress, focused on the depression, focused on the difficulty of the situation that we cannot see that God is delivering me out of this thing. Well, sometimes we don't realize that this very difficult situation is drawing me closer to God and to delivery. The closer you get to delivery, ladies, y'all remember, it hurts. Mine ain't on the baby. Mine ain't on it. But, but I tell you, when that baby comes out, you forget the pain. There are some things in your life you've gone through, you're going to forget the pain. You're going to forget the misery because God will have come through for you. My inner clock is set for a divine appointment. I got a divine appointment with God. God will not withhold good things from me. And, 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 and uh, Psalm 84, 11, it, it, it just tells me that there's no good thing I will hold from those that walk upright and love me, praise God. What else, last thing about this delivery? God's will for my life will bless me and benefit me for eternity. God just not giving me a deliverance in my life just for now. But whatever you're going through, whatever you need to break through, what is that they say you need to push? What you need to pray until something happens. I know sometimes they'll get you in there, and if you're so close to that baby coming, they'll say, don't push, don't push, don't push. Well, y'all better get yourself together because I'm fixing to push. <laughs> Amen. Yes, I know I'm talking about from what a lady is gone through. But let me tell you some men, you need to be pregnant with the word of God today. We need some pregnant men. We need some pregnant women. We need some pregnant old ladies, pregnant young ladies, pregnant young men. We need some people that are pregnant with the seed of the word of God. And you can be better than that little old parson today. You can start seeing birth, your gestation, your pregnancy. You're going to see things come to pass in your life very quickly. Look at your neighbor and say, very quickly. You know, I looked at that man over there when he got healed, and they said, first, he stood up. <laughs> Somebody just needs to stand up. And then say, after he stood up on his feet, he began to walk. And say, after that, he started leaping and praising God. 
Now go ahead and stand up, praise God. You might have to be like that man to get yourself together, get your bearings together. <laughs> if you at home, you go ahead and stand up. You say, well, I can't stand up as fast as you say, Pastor Ever. But this man had been laying there for ever long, how many years? But that man stood up. I'm sure it looked a little jittery at first. And then that man began to walk. And he said, I can walk now. And then all of a sudden, he said, whoo, I'm up on my feet. And he started to jump and praise God. And then after that, that joker got to praising God. Somebody need to stand up and, and then just know you can walk around a little bit in the house. Do what you do. Do something you hadn't done because that's what he did, praise God. And then, you know, you, know, you begin to praise God. I believe y'all say every praise belongs to God. He's a deliverer. We're going to sing that song here in a minute. I believe I, I, I heard him praise God. And I believe this. See that? We're going to praise God. <laughs> Go ahead and stand up, praise God, and, and lead, what, do what you got to do. But I believe we owe God a praise. That man, he, he, that's what he did. How many want to praise God today? <laughs> 